You get paid in direct proportion to your ability to figure stuff out. So let me give you an example. Question and answer, Frank and Marguerite, go. Well, first of all, uh, thank you all for having me. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay, good. Um, thank you for having me back. I had a few questions yesterday that I wanted to address. And um, first, give another big hand for Frank. He's extraordinary. And, and what you guys don't know is we've kind of become quasi-accountability buddies over the last couple of years. And it's so funny because we have this like weird knack of saying or reaching out to each other when something is going on and we don't even really realize it, right? Like a few weeks back, Frank uh, was had COVID, as he might have mentioned. And I, did. I had just... No, he didn't. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, well, there you go. He did. And it was funny because I had just randomly sent him something and, and he said, you know, and then I saw on Facebook that he had COVID. And I'm like, uh, why did you not tell me? And so I took in my little um, mama pack, is all I could say. And my husband calls it my witch's brew. I have a thing of, that sits on the corner of my counter. That, and, and he's like, do I really have to eat that stuff? I'm like, yes, you do. And I texted him literally like three times every day. Did you take it? Did you take it? Did you take it? Just so you know, my witch's brew is it's just honey, garlic, ginger, and lemon, right? And it's been fermenting on my counter for a couple of years. But he did, and it helped him. He's still cringing, thinking of having to take it, aren't you? Garlic, evil spirits, exorcist. <laughs> It worked, did it not? Who are you people? <laughs> uh, so anyway, first I wanted to let you know, I did not say yesterday when I mentioned that I had breast cancer that I am cancer free. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I will tell you that Frank was very helpful during that time, sending me messages and reaching out to me and helping me. So what I will tell you guys is that the best thing that you can do is value your relationships, right? And making sure that you're staying in contact somehow, whether that is, you know, a text, a call, smoke signals, you know, a Facebook message, whatever that looks like for you, those, that's the real deal. Like, you want to think about if something goes wrong, who do you call? And I know that I have a handful of people, Frank is one of them, who I would just reach out to and I know he would just be there, right? And those are the people that are the most important in your life, and in, in addition to your family. And I think that in real estate, we get so consumed with our clients becoming first. You know, um, Mr. Kanoki mentioned that, you know, we work seven days a week. I'm here to tell you that you don't have to. We do. And the sad thing is, is how many of you have ran off to show a home in lieu of doing something more important for your family? How many of you have stopped what you're doing at a kid's event or a family barbecue or a birthday party or something like that to take a phone call from a client? You know, I was thinking about it yesterday and I'll never forget that when my son John, Jake's younger brother who's here, I'll never forget a phone call. I have it saved to this day because whenever I get a little too full of myself, I listen to that voicemail that was a five-year-old little boy saying, Mom, we're supposed to go to the movies at four. Mom, you're not here yet. Mom, are you coming? Are we even gonna go to the movies today? No. Well, it's okay, I love you, Mom. Who's gotten a voicemail like that, <laughs> right? It's heartbreaking. And what I'm here to tell you is that we don't need any more real estate orphans in this world. We need to do exactly like Frank said and put our phones down. We need to be present. We need to be a part of the most important people in our lives, most important people in their lives. We need to be present. Right. And so I hope that if you got nothing out of this, which I know you've got millions of tips and tricks, that you find a way to do some of these tips and tools that can make a difference in your life and your family's life and allow you to be more present. So one of the best things that I did over my career was, as Mr. Kanoki so gratefully told us, is client events. And what did I do? I had Easter parties and summer carnivals and Christmas parties and uh, happy hours and outdoor movie night where I could include my children. My kids will tell you they had some of the most epic birthday parties ever growing up. <laughs> and, 
And that was because I would combine it a lot of times with client events and having fun. And then you can write it off and do all that, right? So those are just a few tips and tricks that you can do. And you can find ways to include your family, but in a positive way, and not exclude them because you're so busy taking care of clients that you're not taking care of life. My goal is to help you build a business around your life, right? I mean, a life around your business instead of a business around your life. So many of us are so focused on our business that we're not living a life. Yep. And I've told a few people while I've been here over the last few days that here's how life works for you is that if you have so much going on in your life that you're not taking care of your health, yourself, the people that you care about, one of two things will happen. That will change by choice or by force. Yes. Yeah. Which do you prefer? Choice. Right? right? And that means that you have to make a conscious choice every day of how you want to live life. Just like back there, Joe was laughing at me because Frank said, don't pick up your phone for 30 minutes. He goes, there's no way you can do that. <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm thinking, okay, now there's a challenge. <laughs> right? Now I've been challenged to not pick up my phone. I'm thinking, how am I going to do that? I won't know what time it is. I'm like going through all the excuses in my head. Anybody of you have that voice inside your head? Okay, so my voice inside my head, her name's Sally, and she's a horrible bitch. <laughs> there ain't nothing I like about Sally, and I'm sorry if Sally is your name in here, so that is not you. But the bottom line is there ain't nothing good going on up in your head. How many of you would ride in a car with Sally and listen to her saying, what's wrong with you today? I can't even believe you wore that. What were you thinking? I can't believe you said that to somebody. What an idiot you are. You don't know how to sell real estate. Who do you think you are? Right? Who, that voice is going on inside your head. I already know because I remember one gal coming up to me earlier, and I won't say her name, and she's like, I'm stressed out. I'm not sure what to do. I'm so afraid I'm doing something wrong. I'm so afraid I'm going to screw this up. I'm like, get out of your head. <laughs> You're going to be just fine, right? It's okay. You're doing the right stuff. And there's nothing wrong with reaching out to other people and asking them for advice and help. And many of you are like, well, I don't want to ask them. They're too busy. I'm, just, oh, I'm going to look like an idiot if I say something like that to her. I don't want to look stupid if I call her and talk to her. I don't know. What's she going to think? She's going to think, why are you even bothering getting in real estate? And y'all need to look to Sally on the left or look to her on the right and say, get the hell out of my car. <laughs> Get out of my head. There's nothing good going on up there. So you guys, number two, I'm going to say, for women especially, and men do this, but not as often as women, stop saying <laughs> shit about yourself. <laughs> yeah. When somebody says, oh my gosh, your dress looks so cute. Oh, this old thing? I just dragged it out of my closet. <laughs> somebody says, you look cute today. Oh, I'm having, having a horrible hair day. Oh my gosh, I screw stuff up all the time. I can't even believe you said that. What? Like we're talking more shit about ourselves than anybody else. Stop it. My favorite video ever. Thank you. Because you know, it's funny because men don't really do that. They don't do it nearly as much as women, right? So there's a great video. If you guys haven't seen it, it's my favorite video of all time. I got to show it at some point. Have you all, you got any of you guys old enough to remember Bob Newhart? Yes. Okay. Bob Newhart, look it up on YouTube and save it in your favorites and play it a hundred times. It's called Stop It. And he's a counselor. I'm not going to go into it. I want you guys to look it up. It's called Stop It. It's one of the funniest videos ever. But basically, this gal is worried about something happening. I can't remember. Oh, she's worried about being buried alive in a box. And he's like, well, has that ever happened to you? She goes, no. And he goes, OK, well, I, I'll give you some advice. I, I have it now. And he goes, he goes, it's just five words, right? Or two words, he says. And, and she says, well, what are those words? He goes, well, I charge $5 a minute. And she goes, okay. And he goes, well, it's probably not going to take a minute. But, and he goes, and by the way, I don't give refunds. <laughs> she goes, okay. So she finally says to him, okay, what is it? She goes, oh, I'm going to write it down. He goes, oh, I, I don't think you need to write it down. It's okay. Finally, she goes, okay, what is it? He goes, stop it. <laughs> she goes, is that it? Is that all your advice? He goes, yep, stop it. So how many of you are trying to complicate a bunch of stuff and you're worrying about crap that's never going to happen in your life? This is not at all what I plan to talk about, but for some reason I felt compelled to say it. <laughs> so many of you guys have a million excuses for why you can't do it. Why it's not going to work for you. I love when I get up here and I talk about something that says, oh, that'll never work for me. Oh, that doesn't work in my market. They're like, really? It's working clearly. 
And there's the bigger pile theory out there, right? Listen to people who have a bigger pile. Whatever that is, whether that's money, experience, information, listen to the people who have a bigger pile. If I'm here to tell you it works, what I can promise you is it works. Because let me tell you about a gal named Linda Buckmaster. So I had been in the business about a year. Y'all remember how smart I was to open my own brokerage when I'd been one year in the business. And I was told, if, for any of you who remember HUD homes back in the day, they were still around. But back then, they had a $500 down HUD home program. And you weren't allowed to hold them open. That was like a HUD policy. So guess what my brother and I did? He was in the mortgage business at the time. We went out, and we found the busiest, ugliest HUD home we could possibly find, because I didn't have any houses to hold open. I was a new agent. And we would put a little table out front, with <laughs> little flyers, and sat, sat out on the lawn in the front. And as people drove by and walked up, we'd like, would you like a tour of the home? And we did an open house. And one of the gals that came through was a little gal named Linda Buckmaster. She was in her 50s. She had grandchildren, and her daughter had been homeless, and she was raising her grandkids. And she just wanted a home for her grandkids. So I helped her buy a $50,000 HUD home in 1997. The commission was like 1500 bucks, and that was before I, well, I had my own brokerage, so I didn't have to split it with anybody at the time. <coughs> Fact was, it was 1500 bucks. Let me tell you what Linda Buckmaster has meant to me since 1997. She has personally bought and sold eight homes, has created more wealth for her and her family than she ever thought possible, number one. Bought and sold eight homes through me over the last 25 years now. Gosh, it's been, to, oh my God, I feel old. <laughs> Even better, Linda has referred people who have referred people who have referred people who have referred people eight levels deep, 65 referrals and still counting. I have one in contract right now, closing tomorrow from that referral tree. Over $400,000 in commissions in 25 years. It's a kind of a pyramid scheme, I think, right? Yeah, it's maybe like a referral tree. You guys, that's the value of number one, what we do as an industry. We have literally changed lives. But if you create value and you help enough people get what they want, you'll get everything you want. Linda Buckmaster still comes to my client events. She still gets my letters. You know, her birthday was a few weeks ago and I sent her just a quick text. Happy birthday, Linda, I hope you're doing well. She goes, you're the only one who has wished me happy birthday today. Yeah. You guys, that's the impact we have and the potential we have. So if you are not just doing the basics, if you are not just taking care of people, then you should get out of the real estate industry. But that's the power we have. That's the true power we have, 65 referrals. But you guys would rather go spend money on Zillow. Oh. Or you'd rather put money on a park bench. I don't, never understood that. I don't want anybody's butt sitting on my bench, right? <laughs> and, and, or, or shopping carts, right? Like I see the guy, you guys, shopping carts. So these are all things that you're quick to spend money on because the biggest Advertising sales suckers on the planet are real estate agents, right? All they have to do is say, if you get one deal out of it, yes. Yes. it yes. will have made you the money back. Oh, so what are you doing to add value to the people in your business? What are you doing to create just a few of the examples you've learned in this workshop the last couple of days? And I totally monopolized the conversation. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we were supposed to actually do Q&A. So I don't know how much time we have left. Do any of you have any questions you would like to ask Frank or I, or thoughts on what you would like to hear us talk about? First of all, uh, I, have a question. I have a question. Did you just say you were so old? Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Did I say I was old? Oh, I just said it made me feel old. Oh, yes. Stop. Yeah. Okay, stop. You're right. No, I don't. I don't pay for leads. It's crazy. If you guys don't do video, you need to do video. Oh, I hate being on video. Stop it. By the way, uh, Chris Pillow Production and Entertainment is here, video recording. Yeah. My son Jacob, and he's do, here to do video. And, and if anybody, um, if you want any tips, Lori, Lori, raise your hand. I tell you, quality videos right there. With both of them this yes. yes. Awesome. Okay. Can I ask my question real quick? Sure.
So I'll I'll address that. Um, Sally's Barry. Sal what? Sally. Yeah. Am I am I Sally? Married Sally. I married Sally. Barry. Oh, I buried Sally. Yes, absolutely. I will say that you know I always love the 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 comment. Um, you get paid in direct proportion to your ability to figure shit out. Bingo. Right? Repeat that. You get paid in direct proportion to your ability to figure stuff out. So let me give you an example. Y'all walk into Walmart and you need to buy a widget. And you walk up to somebody and you say, hey, I'm looking for a widget, right? And they go, oh, yeah, I don't know where it is. And they walk away. Or you walk in and you ask somebody in Walmart and they go, oh my gosh, it's right over here. Let me take you there. And they walk you over to where it's at. They explain, hey, here are all the different options of the widgets. This is one of my favorites. This is the best seller. Any other questions I can answer or help you with? Who do you think is going to rise to management? And just for the record, we had to go to Walmart the other night. And this is no diss on Walmart. They are now down to four checkers. Everything else is self-help. And with all due respect, I am not an employee of Walmart. And I am not looking to go there to help myself. It is the cheapest, but I'll tell you what. I will choose to go anywhere else when, when it's possible than Walmart. So there can only be one low cost leader, you guys. Do you want to be the 1% that Frank talked about earlier? Who's listing for 1%, a low cost leader? Because somebody's going to go under them. Yeah. I've even seen people say they'll advertise and do your listing for 500 bucks, right? Is that who you want to be? So there can only be one low cost leader, but I'll tell you, there's tons of stuff above that. There's Target, right? There is, which is always incredibly cleaner for some bizarre reason, right? There is Nordstrom's, there's Macy's, there's all kinds of places that are better possibilities and service than Walmart. Where do you want to be and who do you want to be? There you go. Did that answer your question? I guess it didn't. So the question was, how did you get that confidence? Collect stories from people, not you. If you're new or newer, Use our stories. Just say, hey, you know what? I have this example of somebody and here's what happened and here's what I can do to help you. Collect stories. And the best way to gain, gain confidence is experience. But if you don't have experience yet, collect the stories of somebody who has a bigger pile than you. <laughs> of experience and knowledge and information. Collect those stories that you can then tweak, tweak and repeat back in a way that sounds like it comes from you. I'm not saying lie and say it's you. I'm saying use that story as an example. Does that make sense? Did that help answer your question? Who absolutely loves Marguerite and Frank? <laughs> I know I do. And uh, who here would like to have more Marguerite and Frank? Well, if you're in C4, you get that. <laughs> All right, huge, huge round of applause for these two. Two, three, four, and a half.